Hey everybody, it's Chris and I've got a new survivor interview for you. Remarkable healing story. This is Georges Cordoba. He is a long-term stage four melanoma survivor, had mets to his brain and uh, he's here, he's alive and uh, doing well today. And I'm excited to, to share his story with you so you can get to know him and be encouraged and inspired. So Georges, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm honored. So I guess we'll start in the beginning. When were you diagnosed? Well, I was diagnosed back in uh, 2002, just three weeks after my mother passed from lung cancer. She was a smoker, but uh, little did I know that I already had the disease in me in, in the way of melanoma. I was in the sun all my life. I joke around that I learned how to swim before I learned how to walk. I did surfing, sports, uh, used to play a little bit of professional tennis, played NCAA Division I tennis. And uh, basically I was in the sun all the time. I think that's what got me ill. And uh, the whole thing started in, in August, 2002. And I fought, I fought the disease for 10 years until July 2012. And through those 10 years, I actually started, I was one of these people that uh, just were taught. My programming was to go run into somebody with a white coat to help me out. And so I did start with chemo and radiation, but thank God uh, also I was able to be operated. I had 10 surgeries and I don't know how many biopsies in 10 years, but in year eight, um, that's when I had the meds in the brain, eight tumors to be exactly, and two of them were not uh, operable. Uh, I'm a person of faith, I'm a Christian, and uh, it was uh, throughout, I was always in prayer and so forth. I, at the time I was diagnosed, my kids, we have been blessed with five kids. Now they're older, of course, it's been a while. But um, so it was 10 years and, and 10 surgeries. Uh, but uh, on year eight, I decided to go natural. I took the holistic road and, um, and basically I made a radical change in my eating. I was pretty strong and, you know, as always with my faith, but uh, as I changed to, to the natural route, I also worked a lot on my emotions and some, some areas where I needed to be forgiven or forgive myself or, or forgive others. Uh, that was very important. I kept logging all this stuff through the years and ended up writing a book, which I launched this uh, early this year. Uh, it's called Beating the Odds, My Holistic Journey, uh, Holistic Health Journey to Overcome Advanced Cancer. And uh, I wrote it in English and Spanish. I'm originally from Venezuela, uh, Caracas, Venezuela. And uh, both, both made Amazon bestsellers the first day. Uh, I noticed that there's just a lot of need for this. I know you, Chris, for about now, about two and a half years. I actually quote, there's a, a few quotes from you in my book um, and uh, about your book and your program. And uh, so I'm a fan of yours and I love what you do. I see your interviews. Sometimes I go enter the QAs, but I don't say anything. I've been, you know, busy also. Uh, working or helping people. My previous life, let's say I was uh, uh, an engineer, software engineer, and I was already a CTO for companies and that was what I was doing. But when I was sick and survived, it was a message from God saying, that wasn't the song you were born to sing. You were born to sing, you were born to help others. And uh, I really take, as you say, in one of your quotes, you know, it was a message, a divine message to say that I had to change. And uh, it took longer than I thought. I had to have jobs patience, you know, but uh, <laughs> but uh, here I am 11 years later and I'm cancer free, still, you know, natural. And, um, and my goal is to help others. 
reach uh, optimal health and uh, wellness and life purpose. Because as you know, in our days, very many people, including family members, they don't know what they're here for. Yeah, that's really fantastic. I'd love to, to talk about what you changed. What, so what changed in your life at year eight when you realized, okay, I've had a bunch of surgeries, I've done chemo. Did you have radiation as well? Yes, yes. So you had had basically every every treatment they had to offer, you had gone through and you still had recurrence. Um, and so what did you change? What, what did your diet? Uh, what did you change your diet to? What else? What other therapies did you incorporate? Yeah, a, that's a great question. The first thing through prayer and looking at, you know, I started really focusing at one point on Jesus miracles, but I realized, you know, our best coach is our intuition and our internal self. And uh, I just realized that nothing was working and it was always, thank God I, I had surgeries. I wouldn't, we would not be talking, but it was a pattern, you know, surgery, remission, treatment, and then recurrence and, and so forth. So it, I, I really became a student of melanoma and a student of cancer and, and, and started looking at uh, not only on dieting, but as I call the other three legs of the table. When I, when I coach, I, I, I use the metaphor of a four-legged table physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. So I was looking where was my, my weakest link. And, uh, <clears throat> and I realized that not, none of this stuff was working. And uh, they were really doing testing on me. Testing the melanoma was pretty, pretty recent, very aggressive. So they were, I felt like a, a guinea pig. pig. And uh, so, <clears throat> so I decided at that point when they were giving me chemo for my brain, it was capsules, and needless to say, the pricing on this stuff. But uh, after I took one week of that, I realized I was in prayer, and and something told me I was in a chapel. You know, I, I think it was the Lord that said, "Hey, you know what? Stop all this stuff. You don't need that stuff." And I took a leap of, a leap of faith. I have doctors in the family, and uh, my wife herself is in the in the medical field as an ultrasound tech and uh, you know, no, you're crazy, this and that. I said, I know what I'm doing. First of all, I'm gonna clean myself. So I went to a naturopath and we did a, a detox program. It was 21 days and then uh, they we rested a week and, uh, and we worked in 21 days. When I talked to him the first time, somebody, an angel, I have many of them, as I mentioned in the book, told me about this guy. <clears throat> so I went to see him north of, uh, I live in Miami, Dade, Miami, Florida, but I went up to Fort Lauderdale, talked to him. He told me a few things, a Christian guy. And uh, the main thing that I got from him was uh, the pH levels in my body. Uh, and, and actually when we did the first scan, which was non-toxic, it was not approved by the FDA, but uh, I know that he, he showed me how, how acid was my whole entire body, not only from the chemo, but obviously, I guess, stress and things like that, producing a lot of cortisol and so forth. So, so after I talked to him and I did some praying, I, I just said, you know what? I went, and I, and I went per personally to my oncologist and told him that I was quitting everything. The only thing I was not going to stop was doing follow-up checks. And uh, so I started the journey that way. And as I kept going back, they, were, they could not believe it. So what, what I first, my first thing was detoxing myself. I, I went through almost, you know, a month and a half doing that. And then he gave me some, some samples and, and menus and stuff. Uh, things that I saw in, in your DVDs and your program. Uh, but, uh, I, that I had already started. And uh, that, that's the beginning of the journey. One of the things that he didn't take away in the beginning because I was pretty weak with all these surgeries and all these treatments was uh, he gave me, he said, still have some eggs if you want to. But on the second phase, that's it. You're gonna go completely, completely plant-based. 
And uh, that's what I did. I started to become a, an advocate for this. Obviously, as things got better and all of a sudden, I, nothing, there was no traces of cancer in me in 2000. It was almost November 2012. Um, you so know, how much time uh, was that between when you started this and that scan? Uh, about a year and a half in my case. Uh, there was, since we, since we started, when I had, I had four craniotomies and two gamma knives uh, on me uh, when, when these uh, tumors appear, but there were two, as I say, that were not operable. I, uh, I just not only went and detoxed myself, but I really pumped up my prayer group, see things and, you know, in positions of hands. And, uh, you know, if you ever have I'll send you a copy of my book. Um, I mean, the testimonies of, of the Holy Spirit just healing me right then and there uh, are amazing. So, uh, and it was really then when I think things accelerated, but, but about eight months into my holistic journey, my, my natural path, uh, I had no traces. It's just that I kept going and, uh, and you know, are you still listen? The thing you're much, you're younger than me when you were diagnosed. I think it was in 2003. You were a young guy. Yeah. And uh, but in my case, I already had some programming on me that I had to de de decode. And so, but uh, at the end, you know, I just realized that that was the the way to go. And something told me that I just needed to change careers. Uh, I didn't 100% until 2017, early 2017, when I took another leap of faith and I said, you know what, I'm going to, I, in, in the way, along the way, I, I studied uh, uh, specially for the digestive system and dysfunctional nutrition, when Andrea Nakayama in, in California and in several other uh, certifications, particularly on holistic coaching. And um, because of, I guess, uh, I guess the plan that God has for me, I incorporated the spiritual part. It is one of the weakest links you can see, and you could probably testify on this with people that are going through any chronic disease, really, but in, including people that are not sick yet. So part of my my goal with my when I do talks and things like that is. Uh, it's to let people know that there really is a God that some people, many people have for, apparently forgotten about. And uh, you can't really go along with life without him. And so, so that's part of, of my, you know, of, of what it did. But it took about really eight months before when I did my, I, I was going every three months. So on the third, on the third uh, follow-up test, the doctor told me, he said, well, I don't know what you're doing. I mean, he had an idea. I told him what I was going to do, but keep doing it. But we can't see, there's no, we, they call that uh, spontaneous remission or something. But uh, <clears throat> spontaneous remission is the medical term for healing. <laughs> we call it healing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, ever since, you know, I wake up in the morning, I tell my kids, they're older now. I'm my grandpa now of three, but I tell them that I'm, I have to go play. Now they know what I mean. But uh, for me, this is not a job. For me, this is uh, my purpose. And I was blessed uh, to actually put together this book. There's a, an idea of doing another one. I saw your course and my, my goal I have here on my board is by that November, mid-November, I would have a, a digital course to offer. Um, I do some group coaching pro bono. There's a lot of people that cannot afford, you know, uh, you know what we do. And, and so I do that as well. I mean, I, 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 there's people that just can't do it and they need the help. And uh, so that's pretty much, that's pretty much George. <clears throat> so I, um, you know, when you were telling your story, I was thinking about how sometimes uh, it really takes a long time 
for a person to admit that what they're doing isn't working. And uh, I mean, we're seeing that now just in what's happening in 2020 and 2021, right? There's yeah. so much f hope and belief in, in things that uh, are not working, but people are determined to cling to that belief that they are working or that they will work. And um, it's remarkable. And, and I see this in cancer, of course, you know, almost every patient believes that treatment is going to cure them. And it's only after they've suffered uh, for some period of time and seen recurrence once or twice, or in your case, how many how many recurrences had you had at that point? Three or four? At the time that I, that I went natural? Yeah. Eight. eight. You'd had eight recurrences. Yes. Yeah. So you're a pretty slow mm. learner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but it's, you know, it's still so remarkable that at that point you didn't get discouraged that you were able to, that you had enough fortitude to say, you know what, I'm, I've got to do something different. This isn't working. And that you were able to say no to your doctors. You know, I, I, there's something that just is burned in my mind, a conversation that I had with a cancer patient many years ago. And, you know, I, I had said no to chemo, so I'd never done chemotherapy. I just had surgery. And, but this was a woman who was doing, she's my age. She was, had breast cancer and then she had done treatment and it had come back and she was just stuck in this vicious cycle like you were of treatment and recurrence and, and, uh, and her health was declining and she was, she, she reached out to me and, uh, we had had some conversations. And at one point she said, you know, Chris, I know you're right. I'm just too scared to not do chemo. And I thought, wow, you know, she's trapped, right? She's trapped in this state of fear. She's too afraid to say no, right? To stop chemo even though she knew it wasn't helping her and she knew she was on the decline. Um, but she was just locked up in a state of fear and it was just heartbreaking. And she, she ultimately did die. Um, but, uh, but that's such an important message, you know, is to at some point you have to kind of, you have to wake up yes, and you have to face reality, right? Like, Absolutely. If, if something is not working, right, you know, it's like the cliche, right? The definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, it's a cliche because it rings true, right? The people repeat it because it, it is it has a, it has there's truth in that. You know, why would we keep doing this over and over if it's not working for us, if it's not yeah. helping you? Um, so that is incredible. It's just so such an incredible part of your story to me that you were able to to walk away after eight years, and uh, and that you had an, you were strong enough to walk away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and <clears throat> there's one important thing with uh, based on what you just said. Um, I noticed, and I actually this morning talking to a client doing a client session. With her, she's going through through cancer. She's almost almost to the point that she's going to stop the, the, the traditional treatment. But uh, <clears throat> she's had several reoccurrences, and uh, I found out. And actually, obviously, uh, I read a lot. You know, you probably read uh, Anita Mor Morjani, and uh, <clears throat> interesting. But uh, in my case. Everything stopped. The reoccurrences stopped two ways. When I took a leap of faith, because by the way, fear is the opposite of faith, and that that says everything. You know, are you close to God? That you are, do you have Jesus with you? Uh, but uh, uh, the other thing too is, I found out. I could I could actually say this, and I and mind recurrence. Even if you worked, if you went through chemo, and they they put you in the work, which I hate, remission. You know, they're telling you that it's going to come sometime. And guess what? Probably, it probably will. 
because if you haven't changed anything on the other three legs, the emotional, mental, and spiritual, that's where the healing is. You know, it reflects in the body, but you have to work on what is in there. I have to tell you that in that year eight, um, I ran, <clears throat> you know, because when you seek, you find, uh, I found this article about forgiveness and uh, I took it by heart. I looked at all the New Testament about, you know, everything about forgiveness. And it was that, Chris, that, you know, when I healed, when I cleared the clutter, the emotional clutter that I carried for years, I just turned 60. Uh, but at that time, it was, I don't know, I was 52. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it was then that my healing just obviously coupled with my change of lifestyle, but I had to really clean my emotional area. Thank God that I was very close to him all along since I was a little boy, you know, especially on the service side. I teach my clients, hey, you know, there's an innate, God gave us a, some, a talent. And, uh, you know, I read a book that said, if you want to really feel the love of God, you need to descend to the hearts of the, those that you help. You know, it's not just writing a check or doing your offertory, which is really, obviously we do that, but <clears throat> there's something to go help somebody without expecting anything. All these things, everything that, everything that I'm talking to you, I wrote in the book, but uh, I wanna help people. And uh, in our days with so much technology, we have more suicide, we have more allergies, we have more chronic diseases. Last year only, 1.8 million people lost their lives to COVID. 10 million lost their lives worldwide we can to cancer. So what's going on, you know? And why are people getting so sick? Uh, so, you know, I'm doing my little, my little part. I cannot heal the world. Uh, hopefully there's a lot of crisis in, in Georgia's out there. I see people that you that you interview and uh, maybe one of these days with a little more follow me, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to interview you, hopefully. That'd be great. You know, we're all doing our part. You know, everyone, it's, it's a team effort. Um, and I'm so glad you, you brought up forgiveness because it's something that's very close to my heart that I talk about often. And, and, you know, it's one of the biggest barriers to healing. Um, that if, if, a, if a person is not willing to forgive the people that have hurt them in life, if they're not willing to forgive themselves, um, if they're not willing to repent and ask God to forgive them, um, they, will, they will stay in a perpetual state of guilt and shame and um, resentment and bitterness. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's completely toxic. It's so destructive to health. And, um, I, it, it reminds me, you know, uh, of Dr. Kelly Turner's book, Radical Remission, because in her research, and she has two books, but in her research, she found that there were 10 common factors between people who survived against the odds like yourself and, and me. And only three of those 10 factors were physical diet exercise and then like supplementation mm -hmm. the other seven factors were mental emotional and spiritual right? right and social and so you just think about if if they're all weighted evenly which who's to say if you're only doing physical things to help yourself you're missing 70 percent of the equation exactly and uh, and I, I've said for years, just my own personal hypothesis that, you know, stress accounts for at least 60 percent. And it might be 99 <laughs> percent. Right? Yes. And if you don't address the, the causes of stress in your life, uh, then you may not get well. And so if your life is, on, is at stake, if it's a matter of life and death, what do you have to lose? by changing your whole life, by forgiving every person who's hurt you, by reaching out to God and saying, okay, I, you got my attention, uh, you know, I'm here, 
right? I surrender, (laughs) you know, and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And uh, my favorite piece of advice I like to give to folks who say, well, I don't know. I mean, I I don't know if I believe in God. If um, my, my answer is always, well, why don't you try believing and see what happens? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Just give give belief a try. Reach yeah. out and ask God to reveal Himself to you. Ask ask Him to for miracles, for help, for guidance, and see what happens. Yeah, I surrender. That's uh, you know people with faith. Even you know just surrender. You know you you're not in control. Let let the Lord drive. You are the co-pilot, not the driver. The moment that you do that, also things change. It's uh. It's amazing. It's amazing. You know, you, you feel like it would be great to have a pill that said, drink this and things will change for you in all areas, physical, especially spiritual. I do a little thing. I had a little tool when I, in the beginning of my program, like the wheel of life and where we go through the different areas. And uh, I'm telling you 90% of the time that the weakest one is a spiritual. And also, there's a lot of emotion there, a lot of stuff that people carry on through the years since they're really very little, you know, five years old even. And so um, there's a lot of work there, but if, if they really want to do it, if they really want to just make the change, because he has to start with them, um, and we're just guiding them, um, things change. You're right. But surrender is really key for those of us that that you know we we understand we are you know walking the path <clears throat> with the lord sometimes we want to take be the one controlling and then you know i have to do it many times oh i surrender what am i doing you know i can't do this alone and uh things change for me again just go back to my peace yeah. that's really good advice so what do you say to someone um when they come to you and they say you know i treatment isn't working for me and and I want to stop but I'm afraid to stop okay great question uh it's happened it's happened already it's now uh, <clears throat> obviously after a few years I get some you know, a few referrals and uh they ask me some of these questions you know I do two not on one usually how long ever it takes to do a discovery sessions to see what they are where they're standing but when when they tell me that the first thing i do is and i don't ask i just do it uh we just take a few deep breaths and we do a prayer a prayer to the lord and uh they seem to automatically just kind of like wow i'm not used to this you know but we finish it's almost like three minutes we just do a prayer it's a it's really a thankful prayer, a prayer of thankfulness. And, um, and I start that in that way. I say, look, uh, you know, who told you, you know, and not with this tone, but in a way it's, it, to go running uh, to, to the first doctor that they recommend you, or you don't even, many people don't even ask questions to their doctor. They assume like a pilot in an airplane that they'll take them to the other side. But no, you, you, you do have to have questions. Actually, you have, a, I think it's you that have a questionnaire uh, that, uh, that you ask the oncologist. <clears throat> and, I do uh, have a, yeah, it's a free guide on my, on chrisbeatcancer.com called 20 yeah, questions for your Yeah, I, I downloaded it and I love it. I use it. And, and that is also something that I give them. But uh, if it's too late, because sometimes it happens like your friend, and you could tell that it's a little too late. Then immediately after that prayer, I said, look, I can help you. And, uh, and so we start, but again, you know, everything is in a way pro bono in the beginning. It's just, just get building rapport. And uh, a couple of times, four times already, I, I've had a situation. I'm not going to say, oh, I can't coach you. It's too late for you. No, you, if you're going to go, you're going to go to the right place if you want to, if you accept the Lord, you know, so I work a hundred percent on the spiritual side when it comes to that, when it is not that way, like, by the way, this lady this morning, uh, we just start and I obviously give her the, 
she went away the first time I, when we started and now she's basically a client. I give him your, your questionnaire. And uh, guess what? Not, not everybody had the, they say, the courage to go and ask the oncologist, even though they might be working with them for seven months. But this lady and a few others did. And, and it, I, can't, I can't explain the empowerment just with those questions that they get back. Because what we do when, when we go like that and we give ourselves to somebody with a white coat is that we give our power to others. But how much power can we have if we're not even close to God? You know, so there's many things there that need to be worked. Uh, I'm not sure, <clears throat> you know, I went through your program, but I do a 90 day, a six month and a nine month. Because it never is enough with nine, you know, because I work on habit change. We work on changes of beliefs and stuff like that. But uh, how do you help them get over the fear? Again, you know, on, on the leg of spiritual, on the spiritual leg, we first work on cleaning the, the clutter in all four legs, the, the physical, the mental, spiritual, and emotional. But uh, we do, I, I create, a, um, my wife actually does the, the, the recording, but I do a personalized um, script on the person's experience. And so it's almost like a visualization slash prayer. And, uh, and then always, always, I start my, my, my sessions and finish my sessions with, with a prayer. We, we close our eyes and, 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 and do it. Um, I've had folks that started saying, look, I'm, I'm not going to make any, I mean, uh, if you were training, you know, to be, me to be calm. No, I'm just, I just trying to help you. So if you if you you you're on this side of the river, you want to go to the other side, right? And you feel that you cannot do it alone. I'll help you. I'm not going to carry you. I'm going to help you so you when you slip and stuff, I'll, I'll hold you. But you have to do the work, and uh, <clears throat> it's so rewarding. Well, um, yeah, it is tough to to uh, step out in faith, and um, you know, you said something that I. I want to disagree with slightly, okay. slightly. And that is, I don't think that fear is the opposite of faith. I think that doubt is the opposite of faith and that you can still step out in faith when you're afraid. And I think that is really the, the when your faith is tested the most is in the middle of fear. Yes. Right. But you, but, uh, and so, it's okay to be afraid, right? You can be afraid and still move forward. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, but, but it's also very important to learn how to give your fear to God. And so that's another part of the faith journey is mm -hmm. moving forward, stepping out into the unknown, and then trusting God and saying, I, I'm going to give you my fear. I'm going to, I'm choosing not to be afraid and I'm choosing to trust you. And mm -hmm. so, in in some ways you're right right because letting fear take over when you know you should be trusting him right is the opposite of faith <laughs> you know when you know you should be believing and you're letting fear and doubt take over but um but i just don't want anybody to to feel like uh you know if they're fearful that they're that they don't have any faith you're right because I, it I is doubt is a it, it's a much better word. Thank you. I learned something here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I mean, and it is something you have to deal with every day during the cancer journey. Your fear is always trying to creep in mm -hmm. and you have to identify it when you feel that emotion, right? When you feel the fear and anxiety, the emotion, the thoughts and the emotions come over you. You have to catch yourself in that moment and say, okay, I, what am I going to do with this? How am I going to process this right now? Am I going to you know, just let it consume me, or am I going to address it head on and say, God, I trust you. I'm not going to be afraid. And I'm just going to keep moving forward and I'm not going to worry. I'm going to, you know, Jesus said, don't worry. Right. He said, don't worry about tomorrow. Today has enough trouble of its own. And that wasn't just, you know, he wasn't speaking esoterically. I mean, it was, this is practical life advice. Don't yeah. worry, you know? And so 
I had to to learn not to worry. <laughs> right? It was a discipline to, yes. to catch myself and not to say, I'm not going to worry. I'm going to take care of myself today. I'm going to make plans for tomorrow. And, uh, and God willing, I will execute those plans. But uh, I'm going to focus on gratitude and joy and say and, and count my blessings because I have a wife who loves me and I have two beautiful children and I have a home and I have enough money in the bank to pay my next set of bills and on and on and on, right? I'm not dying in a hospital today. So I'm, I'm extremely grateful. And um, yeah, I really do think that's the secret to, uh, to finding joy and peace in the middle of a storm, right? The storm of cancer is to focus on the good things in your life and trust God, give him your fear. Couldn't disagree. Very, very good. <laughs> well, uh, Georges, thank you so much for your time. This has been absolutely wonderful. Uh, please tell tell uh, my the audience listeners and viewers where they can find you and n the name of your book again, and uh, we'll wrap it up. The name of the book is uh, Beating the Odds, My Journey Through Holistic Health to Overcome Advanced Cancer. And uh, you can find it in Amazon, both uh, paperback or, or Kindle, the digital version. Um, I'm pretty active in Instagram, and the, uh, my, my Instagram is coach.georges. I have a website. It's uh, qualevita.com, Q-U-A-L-E-V-I-T-A. -E That's quality in Latin, quality, qualevita.com. And, uh, and also in Facebook, I have uh, Qualevita Wellness is my, my let's say, my, my business page. Um, and my email, it's coach.georges at the, the domain, qualevita.com. We'll put links to all of that. Oh, okay. Below the interview so everybody can find you and they don't have to try to spell everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So That's great. Okay. Thank you very much for inviting me. This has been a blessing and, and to meet you personally. You're doing a great job. You know, God has blessed you with a, with a major purpose. And, uh, and I, I and, you know, I, I am grateful for that, that. There's people like you out there doing what you do. Well, I'm grateful for you, Georges. Amazing story. I'm, I'm so excited to share it. And uh, keep it up, man. Like I said, we're on the same team, just trying to help as many people as possible. Absolutely. And uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. Yeah. Please share this video if you think it'll encourage uh, some people that you know. They need to know that cancer does not have to be a death sentence, that it can be healed even after eight years of failed treatments, right? There's always hope. And uh, changing your life in a radical way uh, will only help you. Mm -hmm. It can only help. And, uh, and so just one more testimony to add to the pile. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks again, Georges. Thank you. Bye-bye.